Alright guys, welcome to part two. We have the um, 090, 070 crankcase before you, as you can see. And um, the bearings are all nice and greased in there for the main, main crank bearing. Um, so, what I was going to do is um, put these rings on the piston piston on there and um, put this head down see how we go see how we go so I'm just gonna open these up now uh, teeth time yeah should use my knife where's my knife well, teeth always fail eh? they just they just don't do the decent job so here we go here are the piston rings so I don't know how well you can see that actually, but yeah, you probably can't see it. Is there a little groove there? You can see a little groove in the end of that piston ring. Sorry, the camera's not focusing on that. But anyway, that's where the um, where these little little pins there they fit in there. So that's where, that's where you got to. So if the the pins are if the pins are to the top of the uh, ring race there and um, I don't know if that's what it's called I just made that up right then um, you've got to fit those the right way so you got to make sure these go on sorry you got to make sure these go on the right way so one thing I like to do when you're putting your piston in is I'm just gonna I'm just gonna move this off while we're doing this don't need it in the way This little red packet, uh, the um, gudgeon, gudgeon, or the circlips. Um, so, what was I saying? So, piston rings. Actually, I'm just gonna wipe that down a bit. Oh, yeah, it looks so much cleaner. Um, that was a joke. So piston, rings, these have to go up the same, that same way I was talking about. So, you put the, put the first one over the top and you slide it down to the second position. But to make life easier for you, I always get a bit of the old two stroke oil, bit of that stuff. And I just, paste around there. This stuff's good because you know it's not going to hurt your engine. Especially not on startup, you know, a bit of oil in there. It's going to gonna be nice. You can see me just slopping around there. Slop, slop. Slop it all around. Get it nicely sort of oiled up so that you can slide your rings over nice and easy. Well, easy. -er. Now, I always find it easy to get the top one on and then harder to slide it down to the bottom. So you get the delight of seeing me fumble up with rings and take forever. So I've got this one up the right way, the pins up the top and the little gap where it meets is down is down the bottom. Okay. So you don't want to <coughs> manhandle your rings too much. Um you just want to have them slide over nicely. Now, I'm going to try and stop this from going in that ring hole and just sliding down onto the next piece if I possibly can. Sorry, my hands are probably in the way of you seeing things and the fact that I've got a sucky camera and all the rest of it. So, <coughs> anyway. Oh yeah, yeah, that first one's in. Right, that needs to come down here now. So that needs to jump out of that hole and come down the bottom. Yes, we can do that. Just got to be careful because the rings can be can be quite brittle, and you don't want to break them. I haven't broken some any yet, yet, yet. Anything's possible. 
try and slide this back up onto that level. Sometimes I just get my screwdriver in there just to help me push it out a bit. Well, yeah, it slid back up a little bit far. And you want to slide out there as well too. Right, and just stays there now and I'll just slowly feed that around. Oh yeah. See what I mean by fumbling? Like it just I don't know why I have so much difficulty. Everyone else on YouTube is just like, yeah, just slide the rings over here and blah blah blah. Pop them in. You're all good. Yeah, like a boss, you know, but not me. Not me. I just fumble the crap out of everything. So there you go. There, there it is. Just right before your eyes, I did it. Yay, yay for me. These rings have got yeah. heaps of spring in them. Oh, here's his rep. Yeah. yeah. How long can we finish? I might be about half an hour or so. He wants to play a computer game with me. <laughs> he's gonna show me his latest computer game that he's playing. No idea what it is, but I'm sure it will be something with weapons in it, because he really likes weapons. Anyway, back to the rings. So I'll just slide these rings over now. This last ring over. That oil definitely does help slide it all over. So, now those, those bits there, they will line up with that pin. And squeeze in like that, and that one on that side. All right, and this is all on intake side. So remember I was telling you before in the other video that if you look, you can see the arrow. Arrow means uh, exhaust port. Okay, so that part is done now. That cylinder is set up ready to go. Sorry, cylinder, piston. <clears throat> oh yeah, you'll um, hear me mucking up my words all the time. That's what I do. So, back to the saw here. We need our gudgeon pin and the uh, big needle cage. Gudgeon! Needle cage! Alright, that slides down in there. Slides down in there. Actually, I'm just going to um, grease this up as well, too. Where is my grease? I just want to. I just want to put some grease on it. A little bit of grease there. Grease it all up. Grease, grease. Alright. And that goes in there. Right there. Like that. Okay. And then the gudgeon pin. That'll go in. Not now. Once the um, the uh, piston is on, look at look at the size difference. Okay, so this is the other one, and this is the new one. This is like little little mini hundred cc piston. This is I'm um, big thirty seven cc piston. You know, boss piston. <laughs> ah! Yeah, that's what that's about. <clears throat> so anyway, enough of the silliness. We'll continue on right, just sliding this down over here actually mm, I always where are they <coughs> like to where's my knife get the um, clips out of here I always like to oh, oh. things clips have uh, gudgeon clips they have little ears on them I get rid of those ears because 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 let's clip them off um, I've heard awful stories about them like the force of the piston and stuff I've never seen it but just the, the force of the 
the uh, movement of the piston going up and down and everything like that <coughs> causes those to pop out with those. Yeah, so I just I just clip them off. Goodbye. Right. So one just needs to go on this side. Now this is the other thing you'll see me fumble with. Is that the right side? Yes, that's the right side. So I'm just checking the arrow. See, I'm working on this side so the arrow goes that way. I want that on this side so I can slide that gudgeon pin through. Right. Let's put this into here. Sometimes need some pliers in there to help do this. So you can see. It's a little hard. It's a little hard. Okay, it's in. And it just pops in. There's a little groove in there. It just pops in. And now I just like to um, grab that opening. Just roll it around, roll it around in there until it's at the top. I don't know if you can see it at all, but anyway, that's what I do. And now you're ready to slide your gudgeon pin through. There you go. it's not. That would be too easy. <clears throat> so it just it might need a light tap to go through. <clears throat> so get the old not chromata. Yeah I know it's a chippy's hammer. I'm a joiner so that's why. Joiner turned House washer, that's house washing is my occupation. Chainsaw building. Chainsaw building is a hobby for me. Well, house washer, am I? Right. So, right, that gudgeon pin, I hope there's another one in here because that's too short. Ooh, yes there is. Okay, so we've got another gudgeon pin there. All right, let's pull this one out and have a look at it because this will just end up sloughing around in there because that's actually too short. I didn't realize that, I didn't realize that. Look at this, 070, 090, longer. It's longer, makes sense because the piston's wider. But there you go. So this one, bye bye. And then this one goes through. So just locate that, that bearing again. And hopefully this one will just go through. We've got that pin on the other side just to just to stop it. Oh that went through sweet. Push with the screwdriver just to get it in there. Right, that's lined up heaps better. So that's ready for that other other clip. Hold that gudgeon pin in. So as you get the pliers, find that little edge there. I'm just going to take it away because I don't want to drop it down into the yeah cylinder there. And I'll just give it a tweak. And while I've got it, I'm just 
It doesn't want to come off. That's one did. There we go. There we go. So that's all broken off now. Again, and so I can put that into this here. Um, Hopefully it just behaves like it did last time. That would be great, but probably not. Otherwise, it's going to be a long video. Kiwi Lad versus the Gudgeon clip. <clears throat> Who will be the winner? Who will be the boss? The Gudgeon clip. So far, looks like Kiwi Lad has come out on top. And it's just tweaking. It's something that doesn't want to move around to the top. There we go. It's coming. It's sliding. It's sliding. It's moving. Alright, and that'll do for that one. So there we go. That is all in. Done. Beautiful. Alright. So now we've got this surface here. Give her a rub. Now we're just going to put some um, of the gasket maker on there before we slide the um, piston down on top. Here we, here we go, yo. Here we, here we go. So, gasket maker. Just like I showed you before. And and where this gasket meets here, I think is one of the most important places to have it on too. I think if anywhere you're gonna get an e-leak, it's potentially there. If you keep this all sealed up properly, it should last for ages because you just use so minute amounts for it, you know, and it's really cheap. It's like here in New Zealand, if, if you're in New Zealand, it's 20 bucks a tube, which is, I don't know, I think that's pretty cheap. 20 bucks is, you know, 20 bucks is 20 bucks. Not a lot of coin to invest in for some good, good gasket maker. And as I said before, Donny Boy, 73, he, he does this on his, especially the, um, like he built an MS250, does a good, good bolt for bolt rebuild of an MS250 on, on YouTube. Go and check it out if you are building an MS250. Yeah, very very good very comprehensive bolt for bolt and he takes you through so slowly and just everything's just he's been doing his stuff for a long long time and he knows what he's about basically so that is that gasket maker on there I'm just um, I'm just gonna make a new little thing here for this <coughs> sure my gasket maker is all sealed away correctly because you can waste a lot of this you can waste a lot of this if you don't have I've just got a little plastic wrap around there um, Donny boy 73 has a really good tip about putting Vaseline on um, I haven't got any Vaseline for the record for the record I don't have any Vaseline um, and don't really want any in my workshop just for that purpose. But I've found, anyway, moving on from the Vaseline, found that works just fine, that gasket maker. So I'm just going to grab the gasket that I prepared earlier. 
gaskety and I'll just put that down over the piston there and just put it on top like that and just maneuver it around so it's sitting on the holes I just I just tack it down like that tackety tack right so I'll make sure these rings are all lined up I don't have a ring compressor set um, really want to get one probably will don't have one yet slowly gathering tools um, the next purchase I want to make is some deep impact sockets uh, that will really help so now we need the uh, cylinder bolts one two three four and um Yes, I'm still videoing you. Yeah. I told you I'd be done in about half an hour. Half an hour. <laughs> no, it hasn't. Mum said it hasn't. No, it hasn't. He's, he's back badgering me again. I've got to go play video games with him, but I'm, I'm just going to put this cylinder down first. So, here we go. Here we go. So, end of the video, end of this part will be the cylinder down. Um, and um, yeah so where was I going with this um, so here's a cylinder now I like to once again for um, sorry about my arm reaching across everything just like to dab my finger in the two stroke oil again and I'll just a mess of it inside that cylinder just basically so it can slide nicely down onto there and um, put a bit around the piston there as well this is just going to burn up when it starts up but it just makes your life easier for now when you're trying to get all this going on and everything as you'll see me struggling with it because I don't have ring compressor kit but never mind that's the way it is right so here we go I'm just going to compress that first ring well actually I'll just <coughs> And I just get my screwdriver. Just to press that ring out a bit. My little screwdriver, where would I be without you? Probably screaming, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong. But hey, you can scream at the screen all you want. Leave a comment if you want. <laughs> Probably get a few comments after this is. Oh yeah, but oh, I've got a ring compressor set. Oh, I don't have one. I don't have one. I want one. I don't have one. I want one. But I don't have one. Yes. Okay. Oops. So we are down on that first ring. Down on that first ring, I just have to look and see. Oh, yep. That's cool. these rings and second one always fights me <laughs> the little taper on the bottom of the cylinder that helps a little bit <sighs> but not much <sighs> let's push that in there yes 
think we have victory. I'm just gonna... Yes, there we go. That went down quite fast, quite fast. So, uh, things that I do now, so I'm just going to, um, uh, sorry, put it on the top, they don't drop down from the top, they only leave room for your tool. So I'm just going to chuck these bolts in now. Uh, my hand was probably majorly in the way of that, so you probably didn't see bugger all of anything, but um, hey, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Oops. This is an awkward place for this one. I need my trusty things. And a trusty screwdriver. Just get that one in there. Right. These are the bolts they have. They're a T27 Torx. Very common to do. Just gotta get the other one in here as well too. And then I'll show you something I learnt off um, a fleet command that I th I don't know if it if it's 100% necessary, but um, it's probably good practice. And he seems to think it's uh, quite good for lining up the. Um, In there. Should have put the bolts in. Should have put the bolts in first. Always, always do this. Always do this. And then I just have like a pretty good time for like 10 hours trying to get just one, one cylinder bolt in. And a minute. So I got that in off camera because I was struggling. But all I did actually is just lift this up a bit and slot the bolt in. So anyway, now I need my trusty um, still T27 Torx driver. Um, I've showed you this before. There's a part number there for you if you're keen to get one. Really, really good. My father gave this to me. Thanks, Dad. So, I'm just going to slowly, man, that, um, that is right in the way there of that hole, the uh, decompression. So, I'm just going to, that wasn't like that on the, um, on the one. So, I'm just going to pop this little E-clip off here, off that decompression valve. And just slide it out of the way there. Didn't have to do that on the 070. I'm just going to wind this down in here. And this one at the back. I guess that one's going down as well too. Everything's lining up. So I said this is the big one. Oh no, I know. Head on it. And uh, she's 137 cc's. These saws, I think, spin at about 8,000 RPM, maxed out. Um, just tighten these down. 8,000 RPM, maxed out. I'm going to show you, I've still got a little trick to show you. These are, I'll just back that off a bit actually. Just back that one off. Back that off. Just get them just coming down. So they're not high revving like the more modern saws, but they have more torque, I reckon. So great for your milling operations. We can require that consistent driving torque. Just back that off a bit. But now, now that that's down there, I'm just going to rotate the piston 
down to bottom dead center, which it was already sitting at, so that's great. Bottom dead center. And then I'm just gonna tighten them up. And I just like to work in a, in a pattern of tightening that one. And then come like a, like a cross pattern, bang, 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 like tight, tighten it up like that. Just to ensure it goes down nice and even. Yeah, that was interesting, that um, little, little um, the decompression lever being across the hole. Another interesting little thing that's different from the, from the last. Tighten that down. And this one now. All right, I'm happy at that. Let's move this back. I'll find my little, little C clip here. C clip, E clip, whatever you want to call it. And just put that back on. pliers for this. Just put it on one side and the other side of the C-clip there. Just let it find its way back on. Right. That's good. Oh, I could have fit down there. I don't know why it was like that before. Was it? Oh no, see it's moved. It moves. I could have just moved it out of the way but all good. All good. Right, I'm probably going to um, put the spark plug back in now. Just to plug up one of the holes there. I told Steve he probably wants to get another spark plug for this. Because this is just a Pharmatech one. Just get the scratch on. This is a Pharmatech one and it probably needs something better. I mean a spark plug's a spark plug I suppose, but you know, my new 46 has a brand new Bosch spark plug because even though I've got a, the one, it comes with a champion one, but you know, how old is that? I just want to start everything fresh so I'm like, yeah. Brand new Bosch spark plug. Bosch like a boss. <clears throat> That's down in there. So there you go. We will call that part two of the 090 rebuild. Repowering it with this 090 head, 137cc head. I think that's what they are. And then later on, I'll take all this junk, well not junk, the, the muffler, and the uh, carb will come off the old um, 070 head, and um, I'll show you how that sort of all goes on there. And um, it's actually pretty easy, it's just some bolts, the, the carbs are a little bit fiddly though, but um, apart from that, pretty cruisy, pretty cruisy. But anyway, that is part number two of the 070, 090, we'll just call it the 090 rebuild now, because it is officially an 090 now. It was a 070, but that was, that was its past life. Well, hardly ran that cylinder, it's a really strong cylinder actually, but never mind. So that's the rebuild. That is how I go about putting the uh, heads on chainsaws. Wrong or right, that's how I do it. And um, yeah, that's really good. Anyway, let's do it.
of life, guys, and I'll catch you next time.